starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Blue. Blue, you better pet that dog. That dog is just dying for... Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to today's uh, formal board meeting. Um, I will please ask Juanita, please, uh, if you could call roll. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisor Gates. Here. Supervisor Galvin. Here. Supervisor Sellers. Here. Supervisor Gallardo will join us shortly. And Chairman Hickman. Great. Thank you. Thank and you. I am here. So uh, we'll get started now on item number two and three are the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to turn it over to Supervisor Sellers for an introduction of his guest today. Uh, thank you, Chairman. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to mention before I start that uh, I met uh, Pastor Wade uh, at a reception for Senator Mark Kelly. Bill and I both met him there. And uh, I was so impressed with everything he's doing and what he's done that I, within five minutes, asked him if he would come do the invocation for us at one of our meetings. And, of course, he very graciously agreed to do that. So I'm honored today to introduce you to David Wade, the pastor of the historic Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Mesa since 1999. Under his leadership, the church has experienced spiritual, financial, and congressional growth. Congregational growth, sorry. Get too tied up in politics. <laughs> he created the Mount Calvary Community Development Corporation at 501c3 to serve church members and the community. The cooperation serves members through education, tutoring, computer training labs, summer youth programs, and after-school care. Pastor Wade is a United Way board member and serves on the board of First Things First, a foundation developing quality early child care. Thank you, Pastor Wade, for coming downtown to lead us in this invocation and prayer today. Would everyone please stand? Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for these moments to share with the supervisor of our community. God, we are in turmoil throughout this city, throughout this state, and even our nation. But God, we know even at this moment where there is chaos, you can bring calm. As these who give leadership for our county, we pray thy blessings upon each and every one of them that they would do their best due diligence for the betterment of our city and our county, our state. We pray for the chairman and every board member, and then we pray for their staffs. God bless them, and we ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, Pastor, thank you again for joining us today. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all you do for our community and for sharing that with us here today. So thank you again. Again, thank you, uh, Pastor, for from all of us uh, and the county for joining us today. All right, uh, we will now move on to uh, item number four, the the pet showcase uh, by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. And Kim is joining us. And I heard, I heard we were supposed to meet someone else today, but they got adopted again. So, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I just get used to it now. I always have Good. backup plans. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I, I said, I, I'm going to pick Clyde but he's probably gonna get adopted. And sure enough, I heard walking through the lobby, meet and greet for Clyde. So yeah. <laughs> right away I had to go meet Rover. Uh, this is Rover. He's only been at the shelter for about a week. Uh, he'll probably get scooped up pretty soon because he is absolutely beautiful. Uh, he's also really well behaved. He's only a year and a half years old, but so far I haven't seen any puppy-like nonsense, no crazy energy or anything like that. He's pretty cool, calm and collected. It seems like he's already gone through some training as well. He knows how to touch and sit and, and walks really well on a leash, which 
I've had my dog from the shelter for about six months and it takes forever to teach them how to walk well on a leash. I am still struggling with that. Luckily, I work with a bunch of dog trainers. Um, so this is a great dog. Rover is probably gonna make a great hiking buddy or running buddy. These types of dogs are great at adventures like that. And again, he's already uh, cool, calm and collected and very polite as well. Uh, he saw some toddlers in the lobby and he did great with them. So also a good perk there. And best part, he's already neutered. So his adoption fee is waived. We are waiving adoption fees for dogs already altered. So already spayed and neutered through June 18th. And the best part about that is you can take them home same day and already begin your life together. Awesome. And he's at our West shelter. <laughs> so I have this little story. Those are smart dogs. Is that an Australian or Queensland or a mix? I believe he's a Queensland mix. I could see maybe Border Collie in there too. When I was fresh out of college, living with my roommate, who was my best friend, uh, came back from a softball game and he said, hey, should we have a dog? It's like, no, we live in an apartment. And he got a dog that looked just like that. And I think that dog lasted on our apartment balcony for about a week and then I had, we had to go rent a house for a yard. So make sure you have a yard, kids, for a dog like that. They're extremely smart. They're awesome dogs, so uh, hope, I hope Rover goes to a good home with a yard quickly. <laughs> Me as well. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, Kim. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining us today. Um, Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman, Supervisors, I just have one announcement. Item number 11 under the pl planning and zoning regular agenda. That item has been withdrawn, and it is noted in the agenda as well. Uh, but there is no board action required, and you will see that in, when you get to the chairman's notes also. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. We'll move on then uh, to the planning and zoning hearing. This is the consent agenda. Um, item number five, USAZ 7062 Whitman. Number six, Marbella West Plan of Development. Number seven, AZ5 Bushnell Perm. Uh, eight, Bell and 114th Avenue billboard. Number nine, CCO US 60 and Country Club billboard. And number 10, the Laresh Voluntary Rezone. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items five through 10? Chairman, none were received for these items. Great, thank you. Then the board will now consider items five through 10. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Jack. I move approval of the planning and zoning consent agenda items five through 10 in accordance with the commission recommendations as printed on the agenda, except that for item five, MCP 2023001, I move we modify condition D5 to add the words prior to zoning clearance for building permits at the end of the sentence regarding the timing of required 65 foot half width right of way dedication. That's a mouthful. Okay, uh, noted uh, with that. So you're making a motion to approve with that stipulation. Um, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Jack. Uh, still under the planning and zoning hearing, uh, regular agenda, item number 11 has been with, withdrawn by the applicant, has, has been stated. So we will now move on to item number 12 and 13 under statutory hearings, transportation 12 to 13 is road file declarations, road file number 5995, road file number 5997. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any registered speakers or comments received on items 12 and 13? Chairman, none were received for these items. Great, um, no being such, do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 12 and 13. Uh, thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under county officers, assessor number 14, state retirement system, government property lease tax. Under board of supervisors, appointments to the public safety personnel retirement systems, local board, sheriff, and county attorney. Eight, 16 through 18 is reappointments or are reappointments to the Corrections Officer Retirement Plan Local Board and the Community Development Advisory Committee. The board will now consider items 14 through 18. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 14 through 18. Second. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. 
still under Board of Supervisors, number 19, Community Solutions Funding Proposal. Number 20 is an IGA with the Gila Bend Unified School District. The board will now consider items 19 and 20. Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of items 19 through 20 and a quick comment. Great, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Tom, I have a motion and a second. Go ahead, Thank Supervisor you, Mr. Gardo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, this is, um, uh, a project that has been a long time coming with the great help of, of course, our wonderful staff here in Maricopa County, working with the Gila Band uh, School District. You've heard me say this many, many times. It's my little diamond in the rough mm -hmm. out there that we sometimes uh, forget because it's, you know, it's it's out there, um, not too, too far, but it, it, it is a distance. But we all drive through it. I mean, it's one thing. I tell folks all the time, even though uh, may not realize it, you're driving right through a, a wonderful community of Gila Bend uh, on your way to Yuma, San Diego, Rocky Point, wherever you're going, it's, uh, you're, you're, you're on your way through Gila Bend. Great folks, just right off that highway, you have around 2,000 folks, great families that have been there for generations. And uh, so uh, it's always been a soft spot in my, my heart. Unfortunately, as we all know, uh, a year or so ago, going on two years, I believe now, they were devastated with the flood. We were just out there with some, um, some infrastructure projects that flood control has been working on, but they were devastated with the flood. The school district was, was hit hard as well. Not only was the school district the, the uh, Red Cross shelter space during the flood, but uh, they were devastated as well. Uh, they had a, a field that uh, had been just destroyed because of the flood. Um, talking with them, working with them, how do we help uh, get Gila Bend back on their feet and, and providing all the great stuff that they do for the community. And one was something I think, Chairman, you, you, you would appreciate. It's, it's a ball field. It's somewhat, you know, something as simple as a ball field. Uh, working with them to create uh, uh, an agreement with Gila Bend to provide this type of activity uh, uh, or project with the uh, school districts. We're using the community solution funding to do this. I think it's a great partnership. Uh, continuing to work with the community and the, the leaders out there in the school district and the, and the, and the small town in how do we continue to partner together on many issues that are facing a, a somewhat rural community, I guess we can call it rural. Um, but this is a great project, it's a great partnership we're, we're having with the school district. And uh, I couldn't be more appreciative with, uh, our, our Jen has been from day one, our county manager, <laughs> when she wasn't a county manager, has been working to kind of move this forward. And uh, so I'm great and honored and privileged to be able to have this presented uh, to the board and I ask for your support and uh, we're gonna have hopefully a great, wonderful ribbon cutting ceremony in Gila Band in a few months. That's, is that the, was that the ball field that we were parked next to when we that went and looked at the- Down the street, right? It was just down the down street. Down the street? We went to go look at it and uh, so it, it, when the flood happened, it happened in the middle of, they had, uh, the school district, passed their very first bond election like in 50 years. So they were re remodeling their whole school. It's a K through 12 school. So they got hit with that. So a lot of the, the, uh, the old school was part of the field. It was, it was just become a dumping ground, unfortunately. And uh, when you have a school district that is very small and uh, their resources are limited, uh, this field would have never been built. It would not any time in the near future, it wouldn't. Um, these these uh, young gals that were playing softball were playing on a small dirt park lot. And um, so I think with this partnership, we're able to have a, really a gem for that community. They have limited resources, limited op opportunities for the, the kids to just be out and, and, and exercise. And with this, it's something not only for the school district, but for the entire town to utilize. So it'll be a nice space for them to have. So. Uh, it's great to have, uh, to be able to use the community solution funds to, to partner with the school district and have this opportunity. 
That's awesome, Steve. I um, I'm gonna keep. I'll keep watching that. And if I show up to a ribbon cutting and that's called oh, Gallardo Field, I am no, making no, a name no. change no. immediately. It'll no. be Hickman Field. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no. This is their. This is their field. We're we're here to just be that bridge. But I I, I did tell the the uh, the principal, um, who's a is a dear friend. I said, hey, uh, we definitely want to want to be engaged in the in the groundbreaking stuff. So I'll definitely keep everyone informed and we'll all go down there together. Gallardo Grounds has a nice ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, it, it's, it's going to be fun. It's, it, this is, this is um, you know, you, the, you deal with so many different projects, but there's always that one project, you know, this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, this is what the fund was definitely uh, created. Uh, I think under your leadership, uh, Jack, as chair, this fund was created. And, and we've been trying to identify projects in which we can partner up with some of our uh, either municipalities or school districts. And you couldn't pick a, a school district that needed, needed help at this time. And I know the county has done um, a lot of work over last year from, from transportation, flood control. I mean, we have went in there mm -hmm. and, uh, and done a lot to bring that town back up on their feet. They were devastated. They're still recovering from this huge flood, and uh, this is just another um, uh, 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 pillar, I guess, in that uh, uh, you know bringing the town back to its its uh, great self that it is. That's awesome. Well, great great vision on that, Steve, and and thank you because we were both there <clears throat> as it was flooding, and and to see uh, uh, honestly to see the county step in in such a huge role with all that all that county equipment to recover for it but the recovery continues to go on and doing something like this for for the kids i can think you know and, and a the, little league would need that field out there it, so. it, it's more than just a field though i mean i think yeah. it's not it's not just for mm -hmm. for the girls to play softball but it's for the entire the entire town you could have kids go out there and and participate um, in a field that they really don't have at this time um, and, and the mayor, I think we, we both met with the, the mayor, the city manager or town manager have been very uh, appreciative for all the efforts that the county has done since the flooding. I mean, we were just out there with the flood control projects and it's remarkable what they have done to, uh, to, to help, uh, uh, I guess, be prepared. You know, we're gonna have flooding again. So how do we make sure we have the infrastructure there to make sure that what happened in 2021 never happens again? Awesome job, Steve. Well, thank you for that. It's been so long. Did I? Oh, yeah, that was. I do have a motion in a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Congratulations, Steve, for getting that done. Uh, next on the agenda, Clerk of the Board, 21 through 24, special event licenses for Wild Arizona, Sun City's Four Paws Rescue. 25 is a firework display application for Luke Air Force Base. Uh, under county attorney, 26 is grant funding from the Arizona Criminal Justice Commission. And number 27 is uh, the intern stipend program. The board will now consider items 21 through 27. Mr. Chair, uh, move approval of items 21 through 27. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under school superintendent, 28 through 29, IGAs with the Litchfield Elementary School District, the Maricopa County Regional School District, number 509. 30 is an amended and restated lease agreement with 4041 Central Plaza, LLC. 31 is competition and practical education evolving. Under sheriff, 32, amended agreement with Town of Fountain Hills. 33 is funding from the offices of the state treasurer. 34 is reimbursement funding from the City of Phoenix Police Department. The board will now consider items 28 through 34. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 28 through 34. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you very much, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under judicial branch, juvenile prob probation, 35 is an administrative office of the court's family counseling allocation. The board will now consider item number 35. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items number 35. Second. Thanks to both of you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under county offices, air quality 36, MOU delegation of authority of the federal plan for existing municipal solid waste landfills. 
uh, Animal Care and Control 37, New Hope Agreement with Pathway for Pause. The board will now consider items 36 and 37. Mr. Chairman, move approval of items 36 and 37. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, Bill. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you for being here, Mr. McNeely, today. Appreciate all the hard work that went into that. Under elections, number 38, precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 38. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve item number 38. Great, thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Great, thank you, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. <laughs> That's a four to one vote again. The, hey, the, the, the legislature is, is, is uh, recessing just so they can focus on this issue in the interim. <laughs> so they can take is, that what, yeah. is that what they put out there? That's the whole purpose of them recessing is so they can deal with this issue on positive. You've been asking for that for yeah, two years been, now. Exactly, so. <laughs> I love my PCs, I do, I just. Gotcha. I love my PCs. So. They'll wanna look in the process. Yeah. Okay. Under emergency management, 39 IJ with the city of Avondale for their emergency operations program. Number 40 is the amend, amend an IJ with the city of Scottsdale for their emergency operations program. Uh, facilities management, 41 SRP business demand response program. Under finance, 42 IGA with the Arizona healthcare cost containment system. 43 funds trans transfers and warrants. Under human resources, number 44, Revision to Employee Leave Policy HR 2415 and under 45 market ranges. The board will now consider items 39 through 45. Mr. Chairman, I uh, motion to approve items 39 through 45. Great, um, do I have a second? Second. And I have a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Human Services, 46, Affiliation Agreement with Widener University Center. 47, IGA with the Arizona Department of Economic Security. 50, 48 through 57, Amend Agreements, IGAs and Contracts with Community Bridges, Area Agency on Aging Region 1, Arizona Food Bank Network, Human Services Campus, Inc., HOM, Sunrise Faith Community Center, Arizona Fire and Medical Authority, Regional Public Transportation Authority, City of Phoenix, and Chicanos por la Casa. Uh, the board will now consider items 48, I'm sorry, 46 through 57. Excuse me, Chairman. Um, just one quick cor correction, I'm sorry, that is City of Tempe, and I think you said City of Phoenix. No, I meant City but of Phoenix. <laughs> okay, City of, <laughs> let the record show that. Thank you. Juanita picked out my mistake. And um, I have two speaker forms here from Blue Crawley for items 50 and 51, and I believe it says 56, yes. is that correct? Thank you. RPGA, funny thing, hey? Okay. <laughs> Can we get a motion first? Um, the first no. ones are <coughs> on your efforts on the homeless, and I just wanted to give you kudos and through all the ones that you had said before rather than get up here and just be repeating as a uh, political gadfly. But then when I get to the one on the RPTA and I left the documents back there, this is the same organization that I would show you their budget, and I've shown you pictures on that, that one of the things they want to do is get 60 more employees. To do what? What have they done? When I look at uh, our air quality and what we're going through right now, one of the things you say is use transit. In your district, how much of it is a transit desert that there is absolutely no mass transit, zero, none. The only thing that you do cover, thank God, in parts of it is the elderly and disabled with the uh, dial ride. But that's not the answer to the whole problem. I'm turning in also the document for 58 to 70 that I'd also like to be speaking on. But when I see what that um, agency is doing and how it's done. I look at the manager's meeting. I know that you didn't attend, 
but they were giving a demonstration for the upcoming meetings um, study session where they said that the best thing for the system is to double the amount of ticket checkers, we'll call them our security force, and to double the amount of money, $54 million that we spend on them. Where are my buses? Where are the bus routes? And would that agency get its act together? I'll see you in a few moments for right. the next thing. Thank you, Blue. Okay, I have uh, read off 46 through 57, uh, looking for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 46 through 57. Second. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We'll now move on to human services. Um, again, 58 through 69, renew three-year cooperation agreements as listed in the agenda. 70 is transfer and consolidation of funds. Inter internal audit 71, FY23 audit plan, annual risk assessment report and internal audit charter. 72 is a revision to the Maricopa County Citizens Audit Advisory Committee charter. Uh, under medical examiner, 73 is a forensic pathology fellowship program contract. The board will now consider items 58 through 73. Excuse me, Chairman. I have one more speaker form from Blue Crawley for items 58 through 70. And he warned us about that. Thank you, Blue. Welcome. Thank you. And it wasn't a warning. It was just an awareness. <laughs> <laughs> you are not the enemy. <laughs> and neither am I. Yeah. Correct. Okay, Tollison, Litchfield, El Mirage, Buckeye, Youngtown, Wickenburg. Wickenburg did have a bus, so back when, but uh, the uh, system said that uh, it wasn't functioning at the level it should be for them to continue funding it. But of course, they had the first bus coming to Phoenix leaving there at 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you had to do stuff here, you didn't get to Surprise till 10. Oh, yeah, and it left Surprise. That's, that's where the bus started, at 5 in the morning, rather than having it based out where it should be. But in all of these communities, uh, Fountain Hills, Cave Creek, Gila Bend, the document that I helped put together said that they were to have circulator within the community and connectors into the metropolitan, because all of them were very tiny communities back in the day. But what I see is that the way that the system is saying it, well, we're going to do it according to how the people feel about it. If they, if they want transit, we'll, we'll work at them to get it. No, I got to breathe. You have to have it there for us. The communities that aren't going along with it East Valley and that massive transit desert, you need to make sure this new one has two things in it. The document that if it gets out, that with the mag portion, the roadways, that you put the transit parts of it in with you guys. That it gets done, that when you're expanding the roadway, that you do the curb cuts and the bus stops and for RPTA, that you base what you're doing on congestion and volume, and let's get this air clean. Thanks. See you Thank, in a bit. Thank you, Blue. Okay. Then looking for a motion, then, from items 58 through 73. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of... I'm sorry, 58 through 73. Sorry. Oh, okay. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 58 through 73. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Thanks to both of you. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And my, my thanks to the internal audit team uh, at that group. Well, I appreciate it very much. You, you've been able to come in and talk to all of us about the plan, the upcoming plan. So that went a lot of hard work and a lot of communication on the, on the jump off point. So thank you, Mr. McGee. Okay. Um, we will now go to Parks and Recreation, number 74, IGA with the Flood Control District of Maricopa County, 75 through 77, amend agreements with Casey at the Bat, Adobe Mountain Speedway, LLC, Arizona Agribusiness and Equine Center, 
The board will now consider items 74 through 77. Mr. Chair, uh, move approval of item 74 through 77. Second. Thanks to both of you again. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under procurement services, um, number 78, contracts for MCSO Warehouse Durango. This action does require unanimous consent of the board. Um, looking for a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 78. Uh, thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Gates. I have a motion and a second. So if the board, or if Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Yes, thank you, Supervisor Gates. Aye. Supervisor Galvin. Aye. Supervisor Sellers. Aye. Supervisor Gallardo. Aye. Chairman Hickman. Aye. Thank you. Still under procurement services, 79 through 82, contracts for forensic, psychological, and psychiatric services, technology network integration services, MCSO inmate canteen food items, and homelessness emergency services programs. The board will now consider items 79 through 82. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 79 through 82. Uh, thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under public health, 83, administrative correction to contract with Tiger Mountain Foundation. 84 through 85, affiliation agreements with Alhambra Elementary School District, number 68. St. Vincent de Paul Agency, 86, is a men contract with Valle del Sol. 87 is an MOU with CDC Foundation. Number 88, fee fund budget appropriation adjustments. 89 through 90 is IGAs with the Arizona Department of Health, Ser excuse me, Health Services. Number 91 through 92 is a student rotation training agreements. The board will now consider items 83 through 92. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 83 through 92. Thank second. you, Supervisor Sellers. And thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Still under public health, number 93, rescind and, appro and approve a revised amendment to contract with unlimited potential. 94, rescind IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services. 95 through 97 is in a partnership agreement for the immunization program. The board will now consider items 93 through 97. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 93 through 97. Thank you, Steve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, under real estate, number 98, resolution authorizing board chairman to execute certain utility easements. So you guys are giving me some power. This action requires unanimous consent of the board. Uh, the board will now consider item 98. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 98. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. I have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Supervisor Gates? Aye. Supervisor Galvin? Aye. Supervisor Sellers? Aye. Supervisor Gallardo? Aye. Chairman Hickman? Aye. Thank you. Now under transportation, number 99 through 101, IJs with the town of Gilbert, the city of Goodyear, Gila River Indian community. Number 102, designation of superintendent of streets. 103, transfer of county right-of-way to the city of Mesa. Number 104, easement right-of-way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 99 through 104. Chairman. <clears throat> yes. I received another speaker form from Blue Crawley for item 101. Okay. Um, Mr. Crawley. My favorite uh, part of uh, 101 is... Uh, mention of one of the oldest communities in the state of Arizona, and that's Kamatke. One of the times that uh, I was trying to find out why the buses weren't in the south and southwest part of the county, and I approached MAG on it, their answer was that it wasn't settled until 1945. I pointed out that six Hispanic families had settled in the Avondale, Tolleson, Goodyear area with Keno. Mm -hmm. So, 
but and also, you know, that Hispanics until 1980 were considered white. So if I had white people there since the 1500s, where's their bus? But then as a settlement, Kamatke was there since 1200s, and it's something that we should recognize and appreciate that uh, that's how long our fellows have been hanging out in the neighborhood, 51st Avenue down at the St. John's Mission. Have a good one. I'll see you at 133. Great. Thank you, Blue. Okay, looking for a motion and a second. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 99 through 104. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Steve. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion carries. Under setting of hearings, clerk of the board, 105, setting of hearing for the proposed Woodland Terrace WDD impact statement. Under transportation, 106 to 108, road files is listed in the agenda, and 109 through 111, patent easement abandonment road files is listed on the agenda. The board will now consider items 105 through 111. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 105 through 111. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under consent agenda 112 through 113, duplicate stale dated warrants. 114, delinquent property tax interest waiver. Number 115, tax abatements. 116 through 118, mail ballot election request is listed on the agenda. Number 119, report on compliance ARS 41-1494. Number 120, RICO Funds Quarterly Report. The board will now consider items 112 through 120. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 112 through 120. Second. Thanks to both of you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under consent agenda 121, settlement resolution of property tax cases and claims. So moved. Wait one second. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, but potential conflict. On okay. This item. Okay, Mr. Gates has left the dais. Okay, would you like to? So moved. Thank you, uh, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We will invite, invite Supervisor Gates back to the dais. Welcome back. Uh, now under the Board of Supervisors Addendum, Elections 122 EAC-E Poll Book Pilot Evaluation Program. Under Risk Management, Arizona State Bar versus Lisa Gray. Number 124, Arizona State Bar versus Stephen Kunkel. Under assessor, assessor, excuse me, 125, Mars Project Change Request. The board will now consider items 122 through 125. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 122 through 125. Thank you, Supervisor Gardo. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gates. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We will now recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Im Improvement District Board of Directors. Uh, under the Improvement uh, District are minutes, number 126. The Board will now consider item 126. Move for approval. Thank you, Jack. Second. Thank you, Tom. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We will adjourn as the Improvement District Board of Directors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Uh, item number 127 is a declare and sell excess parcel number F00047-EX. Number 128 is an IGA with Maricopa County. The board will now consider items 127 and 128. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items number 127 and 128. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion carries. Um, we will now adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as a Stadium District Board of Directors. 
under Stadium District. Number 129 is the annual audit. Number 130 is FY23 budget appropriation adjustment. Number 131 is reappointment to the Arizona Diamondbacks Foundation Board of Directors. And number 132 is minutes. The board will now consider items 129 through 132. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 129 through 132 with a comment. Great, Jack, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Supervisor Sellers. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, James Moffitt for continuing to serve on the Board of Directors representing District 1. Thank you, James. You mean Bubba? <laughs> <laughs> Great, he's a good guy. So, uh, good pick there. Um, the Board will now consider items 129 through 132. Chairman, we already have a motion. We oh, do, uh, did we? Yes. Mm -hmm. After number 132, I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> so uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Juanita. Uh, under Board of Supervisors, we will now adjourn as the Stadium District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Item 133 is the public comment period. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anything to report regarding public comment or email responses? Chairman, Supervisors, I have nothing to report on email comments, but I do have one uh, speaker form from Blue Crawley. Great. Let's call up Mr. Crawley. Welcome. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your efforts, Jack, on that committee, but you guys went into exec session, agreed to her contract and extensions and that she had done what she was supposed to do. Well, I requested a copy of it to find out that because I'm still wondering what master does she serve because I don't see anybody being a champion for the bus. And if you would have been at the uh, manager's meeting, I asked her, had she seen the front page of the paper on the 6th? And she said no. Not that that's relevant or anything, being that it said uh, on the front page, the legislature, governor split on transportation tax. Not that that would have anything to do with any of her awarenesses or as I said, I need the county to be represented there. I know it's a second class uh, entity, you know. At MAG, you have the chairman. And at RPTA, you have a member. You don't have the mayors. You have a council person. But they're just as, no. So when I've requested to see the contract, to see what it is you guys are trying to get her to do since the time that she was here and all the end of the time that Mr. Smith was running the organization. Instead of expanding into where it should have been, you did cutbacks and you haven't taken care of those. So when you hired this woman, did you tell her, hey, we need to get those things? Because I did, like I said, request that. And it's now been three weeks and they said they have to go over it. Well, what part of requesting those things are, being that they're on the record, right? Because when you went into regular session, you voted on it and accepted it. So everything you voted on and accepted is now record. Why can't I get a copy of it and yourselves? I think you'd want to know what they're asking the uh, head of RPTA, well, is it? Valley Metro Rail Metro, or is it Valley Metro, Valley Metro Rail? Well, when I see the spending, et cetera, I understand why the legislature is saying those wonderful things. And are they going to bifurcate the agencies mm -hmm. as a heads up? Thanks. Just a thought. Thank you, Blue. Appreciate you joining us today. Okay. Uh, is that the end of the public comments? I don't have any other speaker forms. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. Okay, we will now move on to 134, which is supervisor's summary of current events. The board members and county managers get a chance to say something. So I will go to the county manager first. Uh, hello, Jen. Do you have anything for us today? Nothing today, Chairman. 
Okay, I, I'm losing track of who I start with. For who did I start with last time? Does it matter? No? Bill, go ahead. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to um, acknowledge today is Flag Day. So it's the day when we, we celebrate our flag and, and I, I appreciate that we start every meeting uh, with the pledge uh, to the flag and all of the, the principles that it stands for, and including rule of law and, uh, and, and all that I think has never been more important in this country than it is right now. So just wanted to acknowledge that. And also wanted to mention that last week I had the opportunity to uh, attend a uh, session in Washington, D.C. with Issue 1. It's called the Faces of Democracy and an opportunity for uh, folks who work in elections from around the country to uh, attend, speak with one another, and then also uh, to, uh, we had a number of sessions, including we visited a Department of Justice uh, and talked to them about the importance of uh, making sure that we have protections in place for elections workers and elections officials who've unfortunately been uh, the victims of a lot of threats, uh, criminal threats over the past few years. I also had the opportunity to uh, meet with several members of Congress uh, talking about the importance of both funding for uh, elections across the country, but again, to provide protections from doxing and other uh, criminal threats that are out there in the country. Uh, had the chance to meet with a couple of members of the Arizona Congressional, actually three, we had three members, so Senator Kelly, uh, as well as Rep Rep Representative Siskamani and Representative Schweikert. So uh, appreciate everyone taking the time to to uh, sit down with us, talk with us about these important issues, and really get to meet with many elections officials from around the country who are uh, doing a great job out there, uh, just doing their jobs, but also unfortunately having to deal with some of the issues uh, that certainly uh, folks in our office here in Maricopa County have the past few years. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. You bet. Thanks, Bill, for your travels. Um, Tom. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, last Friday, I attended a ribbon cutting and toured a new Amazon warehouse facility in Mesa, an impressive facility, 1.2 million square feet. So all of you people are buying lots of packages. <laughs> and uh, I was with the mayor of Mesa and legislator Neil Carter, just impressive. But uh, the fantastic part of this is that they're going to expand up to 1,300 jobs. So economic development in District 2 in Maricopa County is very much appreciated. It, Appreciated also shows how much Amazon considers our market an important market. And speaking of Mesa, I want to congratulate the city for an amazing distinction that they won over the weekend. They were awarded the 2023 All-American City Award. It's a national civic lead bestowed the award given each year to 10 municipalities or counties that are impacting their residents' lives. This is presented to a panel of national judges in Denver, Colorado last weekend, represented by a City of Mesa delegation, including the mayor and members of the council. Um, so elected officials went up there to support the staff who does an amazing job. And the 2023 All-America City Award recognized communities that are working to improve the health and well-being of young people. And this year's theme for Mesa was creating thriving communities through youth engagement. So uh, very important and well-deserved distinction for the city of Mesa. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, just a quick shout out. as. Um, to several county departments. Uh, as you um, probably are aware, we have engaged our community in a program we call Water Days. We have done over the last several, several years, partnered up with the City of Phoenix, County, City of Phoenix coming together. I kind of let them pick the parks. Uh, they kind of know the areas that I'm trying to target here. So they've been really good in selecting the parks. This year, we only did three. Normally, we do five or six. This year, we only did three um, uh, uh, water day events. And the whole purpose is how do we engage the community uh, in many of the programs and services, not only provided by the county, provided by the city, nonprofits. How do you, how do you get them connected? Because most folks don't know. We saw it even through in the pandemic. A lot of folks had no idea where to go to get tested, vaccinated. There were a lot of uh, questions out there. So how do you engage that community? It's not the easiest thing. I wish I had a crystal ball to show me how to do it. But um, nonetheless, I, it's something you have to go out there 
and, and really roll up your sleeves and get to work. But in order for us to have these sort of water days, and the whole purpose, again, um, is to invite the community, the families in areas that have some economic and uh, challenges. And uh, we, uh, we have water events. Uh, the fire truck comes and hoses down. Kids love that. Um, we have water inflatables. We do whatever we can. Kids get wet. As the kids are getting wet and having fun, we're talking to the parents. And we're engaging them on various services. And many of those programs um, are right here in Maricopa County. Mind you, it is very hot outside. <laughs> you know, that's why we kind of cut it down. And last year, we were like 114, and we're standing there at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. It is hot. And I didn't want to put our great county employees through that again, but I much appreciate their services uh, in the cooler part of the summer, kind of cooler, but we have everything. Um, and I know I'm gonna leave some out. I should have had David write, I know I'm leaving folks out. I apologize that I leave you out, but you're gonna get a special thank you from me uh, soon. Uh, Marisol Federal Credit Union being out there, how do we engage uh, uh, families in financial literacy? How do we help them? So Marisol's been a great partner. Animal Care and Control come here every day. The great work that Animal Care and Control does, take it out there in the community, let the family see firsthand. And they have been one of our best partners to go out there. And, and they're just troopers. They bring out the big trucks and sometimes they bring some of the little animals, but it's engaging them. How do we talk to parents about vaccination, spade, neutering, you know, get the, the little, I don't know what you call it, the little microchip. microchip. There you go. You have one, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you got one? No. All right. No. I'm going to get one. No, so they know where I'm at. Ankle monitor. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that. We don't want that. But the animal care and control have been great troopers. Public health. Public health has just been absolute treasures. Um, all the um, uh, services that are provided and information provided by public health are there. They just continue to do the COVID testing. We had dental hygienists out there giving little checkups to kids. We, it, it's all the work they do. So uh, public health, thank you so much. Um, all, all the programs through Human Services, City of Phoenix, Red Cross, CPLC. Um, oh, facilities management. Facilities management been great partners in helping us set stuff up. City of Phoenix Parks and Recreation. And there's around good 20, 25 parks employees from the City of Phoenix that go out there with us, helping us set everything up. They do the barbecues, they, they just do it all. Big shout out to City of Phoenix Parks and Recs. The Sheriff's Office have been great partners. Uh, everyone loves all the equipment the Sheriff's Office has to demonstrate and show what some of the tactical stuff they unfortunately have to use. But they've been great. City of Phoenix uh, uh, Police Department, Police Department been very great. Welcome, how do we bridge that relationship with law enforcement? Uh, with the community. Uh, the City of Phoenix Foundation, they come out and they provide uh, ice creams, free ice creams to everyone. Great to see the uh, City of Phoenix uh, Police Foundation. Phoenix Fire, they come up with the big trucks. Uh, people love that and then they turn on the hoses and all that great stuff. All the domestic violence uh, 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 service providers, they're always out there. Elections recorders, how do we engage them? This is what elections do. This is the importance of our democracy. You hear it from all five of us. The assessor, Eddie Cook. Eddie Cook, Eddie Cook's not here. <laughs> Eddie Cook was out at, at one of our events around, as, as well as his, his staff is always there, the assessor's office. There's a whole slew of folks that come out. We only did two of them. We had our last one this past Saturday. Uh, they're always fun, great turnouts. Um, we're always thinking, how do we, how do we generate? I, um, how can I put this? I always want large numbers. I mean, I want, I want in the thousands. I mean, we've had these events where we have three to 4,000 people, 10. Sometimes we have, you know, three, 400. I always want in the thousands. You know, the more you engage, the more you can help. But they've just been great. We only did two, Mr. Chairman, but we're looking forward to uh, revamping it. How do we do things different? How do we continue to engage the community? We have started this, this, uh, this uh, last night was our first, or yesterday was our first one, our, our community summer program. Again, you have hundreds of kids, if not, there are thousands of kids right now in the summer. How do you keep them out of trouble, doing stuff positive? Um, I've always said this, either we 
do stuff now and, and pay for it now, or we're gonna pay for it later in the criminal justice system. That's exactly that. So we started a, our, our summer program first time. It, didn't, it, 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 was, it was not hard. It's the only thing we did, it took the city of Phoenix model, brought it to Maricopa County. I hate to say this, but we do it a little smarter, a little more efficient. <laughs> uh, you know, we do it a lot cheaper. Uh, we had 500 kids show up, basketball on, on, on Tuesdays, volleyball. Uh, so most of the boys, basketball, it's co-ed. Most of the boys are basketball. Thursdays is volleyball. Um, families come out. Saturday, all day Saturday, nothing but games. The kids are gonna be competing against each other. But again, how do we keep these kids occupied, busy? It's hot outside. How do we keep them out of trouble doing stuff that's, that's get them away from the video games, doing stuff that is productive and just having fun. Our first time going on it, it's one of those things we will look back afterwards. It's the entire summer. We just started, we'll go to, all the way till school starts again. Um, but we are going to hopefully be able to expand this. How do we continue to engage our community? It's been fun, it's been tiring. A big shout out to David and Angel. Oh, there he is. <laughs> our assessor. He came like out a, to our a, water day. Is there like a Batman came out to our water signal day. out there? We're gonna do we're gonna put together a three on three basketball tournament, him and I, and get someone else, huh? But anyway, thank you, uh, Eddie. Thank you for coming out to our water days in South Phoenix. He was able to come in my in our in my district in one of my in one of my parks, so I appreciate it. But anyways, that's it for district five. Awesome. Thank you for that update, Steve. Jack, how do my you follow vice that? chairman, I don't know. How do you follow that kind of enthusiasm? I, I bet you're gonna try. <laughs> uh, well, another another busy period. We I attended the uh, Chandler Community Awards uh, dinner where we they celebrate the leaders in many areas in Chandler, really a, a nice event every year. Uh, there was also an event put on by the Chandler Chamber called Maricopa Matters. And I, I felt honored to share the stage with Sheriff Paul Penzone, Attorney Rachel Mitchell, Recorder Ste Stephen Richer, and Assessor Eddie Cook. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a great event because uh, we got to have all, you know, people in my hometown get a pretty good overview of a lot of different departments in the county, and it was really well attended, and, and everybody did a great job in presenting the, the picture of what, how the county does things and how efficient we are in what we do. Uh, I was very pleased to be involved with that. Uh, I was also uh, at uh, an ADOT facility uh, along with MAG to uh, introduce Don't Trash Arizona Day. Uh, it, it really is a, a nice reminder every year. Well, I'm not sure about nice, but it's a great reminder every year to let people know what kind of damage and, um, and what kind of harm is done by uh, people losing things from their vehicles. It takes just a few minutes to secure the loads on your vehicle and uh, you, know, you don't wanna live with the consequences of what happens if, if you cause an accident from something being lost from your vehicle. So that was a good event. Uh, the Intel uh, Community Advisory Panel meeting that I, I attend, uh, they did their annual economic impact uh, statement, $8.6 billion impact in Arizona. But with all the discussions going on currently uh, in the press, not just in Arizona, but nationally about our water issues, I was particularly impressed by their water recycle uh, efforts at the end of 2022, Intel is net positive for water in Arizona. And they got an Alliance for Water Stewardship Platinum certification because of that. So we're really a great organization to have in our community, you know, aside from the fact that they employ like 12,000 people in very well-paying jobs, they really are a great community partner. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jack. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out to uh, my colleague, um, Tom Galvin. Um, a couple weeks ago, he participated and really brought some vision to safety in at the lakes and especially uh, Lake Pleasant. And uh, I, I appreciated it so much because the sheriff's office was out there 
it was all over the media. It was all over the radio. It was, and you did such a fantastic job out there representing the county and really bringing vision because, you know, you go uh, to the lake uh, as I was a kid. You go there, it's fun, it's exciting, uh, but there's a lot of people that are not prepared for it and they can walk out of there with the biggest tragedy in their life by losing a family member to drowning. And all of that that you did and brought vision to it, people probably just starting to own a boat and things. And yet we still had a drowning out there. And it's, it, so I appreciate, and I just wanna magnify the message again, like whatever we can do to get vision on, on, on our waterways, especially right now when it's so hot, you were talking about water, that's on a playground, but there's swimming pools you know, that, that kids and uh, families need to be warned about because, you know, sites of the greatest celebrations in the world can turn into a tragic circumstance in seconds. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you. The, uh, the other thing is yesterday I attended a meeting uh, in the West Valley with the mayors and managers in Buckeye and um, Blue, you'd be happy to know, they talked a lot about uh, the Prop 400 extension and the sense of, they talked about buses and light rail and roads and highways. And there is an absolute sense of anguish uh, between the mayors uh, because of all the hours, of all the hours of their staff time, MAG's time, talking to our citizens, talking to the community, finding out what's important, coming up with a plan. Uh, and that plan represents, you know, basically money that we can show the feds that we have the ability to pull off these projects and that entices fed money to come too. And now we have a problem. Uh, so uh, I just wanna give a shout out to the mayors uh, and all their staff for bringing vision uh, to just how much of an economic driver our roads and transportation system can be. Um, I just think about just that sense of anguish and it's like you almost need to get a bill electronic billboard program saying hey you know you're sitting in traffic you know in the next couple years uh you weren't you weren't sitting in too much traffic because the people that were here before us coming up with plans uh and and now we have we have this problem where we're going to uh not be able to fund our road structure and i spent time in new york city with my with my family this past week and that gridlock and the small streets narrow, uh, rattling your fillings on, on, this, on this big thing and just thinking the people that were here before us that planned this out and you know, this grid system, this freeway system uh, should be really honored in some, in some point. I guess, I guess our ancestors truly were much smarter than all of us uh, to get this thing set up. So I appreciate your passion with this, Jack, however I can help. Uh, but we've got to keep showing uh, our citizens that we understand that living and being in traffic is, is harmful to a family's health. It takes time away from your own family and getting home and getting to sports and everything else. We need a, we need a, a transportation system that comports to with how spread out this, this community truly is. You talk about Gila Bend, yeah, well, the driver for Gila Bend and those 2,000 families is that is that highway network. They, you know, and you hope you stop at the McDonald's and you hope you spend some money in Gila Bend, but roads get people to these communities. Uh, very, very little else. So, um, with that, but we'll we'll keep working, everybody. We'll keep we'll keep working, Maricopa County uh, citizens, to to try to make sure that what, by the time we leave it, we we leave it to. A, Better, bigger and better place. Mr. Uh, oh, go yeah, ahead. go no, uh, and, but that's that's basically it. Yeah, Steve. I, I didn't want you to end the meeting without me uh, saying I, I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman, but it would kill me if I if I don't uh, make this announcement on Monday, Juneteenth. It was on my list to bring okay. it up. Juneteenth, a celebratory day, uh, not only uh, here in Maricopa County but across the country. Um, it, it is something that uh, I definitely want to recognize as a supervisor, and uh, I'll be attending a lot of events, but I just wanted to point that out. 
to uh, many of our uh, uh, employees and, and citizens and, and everyone. This is a, a day in which we look back and and um, and you know it's it is a celebratory day. We will, you know it's. It's a dark part of our history, but it's a celebratory day, and so I just wanted to point that out. Great. Well, we'll, we'll end it with that. With Blue Crowley also brought uh, just how ex extremely how how much our multicultural community uh, means to means to all of us. You touched on it uh, in our district. Blue. I get the last word, damn it. Okay. <laughs> but thanks for being here. Uh, anyway, so everybody go go and uh, have fun with your families. God has offered a, a cool weather all the way up till about tomorrow, I guess. Uh, so um, go enjoy your families, go enjoy your friends, and, and stay safe. With that, we're adjourned. Bye.